yeah, this is going to be a function block because it requires static memory. And this function block is going to check if the, uh, if if it gets a if, well, the function gets a pulse train as an input. That's pulses positive, negative, positive, negative. And the function, what it should do is it should check if there are pulses on the input. If the pulse train stops, it could either stop at true or high, that is constant on or low but it's not pulsing and this could be used for instance for a transport or something that gives pulses as long as the transport moves and there's a roller in the end of the transport that's rotating and giving pulses we could use this to check uh, if it's actually moving and if we have a roller transport like that we have the motor driven roller in one end and, and then we have the belt and then we have a roller in the other end and then we will put the pulses on the roller in the non-drive end because if then if the transport breaks too, of course uh, the motor could move or rotate or the roller where the motor would rotate, the band wouldn't move because it's broken and the roller on the opposite side would of course not move because the band is not uh, turning it. So let's see. Uh, uh, well, here is uh, the function block. We could uh, look at the input first. Uh, it's enable pulse detection if it's not enabled it's not going to say that it's anything is moving so you can turn it on and off here is the pulse train input and here's a reset if you get a fourth this function block has to be reset it just stores the fourth until it's reset so even if the pulse has start to move again it has to be reset because this is for safety it, it might be moving but we are not going to assume that it's moving so someone has to look at it and reset uh, this function block. Here is the pull space spacing, and that's allowed. We say that okay, there's one second between the pulses. Maybe we then should allow for 1.2 seconds pull spacing. It it can't be one second because it can be a little off, little variation in the speed or something like that. Uh, and then there's alarm delay. Say okay, when the pulses uh, uh, when the pulses stops, how long should we wait until we get a, a fault output? And here the YGH. Uh, that's output position high. Okay, that's constant on as long as there are pulses on the input. Uh, the Y1 here is actual pulse spacing. We just measure the spacing between the pulses and output that. And there's a fault and a warning. The warning is issued immediately when the allowed pulse spacing time is exceeded and the fault is delayed uh, a little. And here is just internal static variables. Static variables are variables that we we always remember they stay uh, or the, the value I write to these static variables are going to stay uh, or, or, or the variable is going to keep it as long as there's power on the PLC, my PLC. And then we have temporaries. They uh, does not have the uh, properties of the static, so they are forgotten. And then we have a constant down here. Okay, that was the declaration. It's the code that's interesting here. So we're going to look at the code. Here, this timing that we are doing here, you can read this. We are using something called a time tink from the operating system. And the operating system is giving me a millisecond counter that's counting modulo uh, 2 million something. 2 to the power of 32 minus 1, which is 2 million something, 2 million 700,000 or something milliseconds. And then it restarts at zero. And, and the maximum here is there's something around 24 days. So what I can do is I can measure a time duration of 24 days. And in process automation or factory automation, uh, uh, 24 days, uh, yeah, we are not going to measure that kind of amount of time. So this is nice. Um, uh, and um, uh, what it says that we can see if we can zoom a little here on the text. Uh, the, it's called a time tick function. It's actually, you can see it down here. And here is an explanation what it uh, does. And, and the data type is called time, but that's just a number of milliseconds as formatted to show, let's say two days, four hours and so on. And here is what we are going to do is that we are going to save this counter and then we are going to let uh, a value just count and then we're going to measure the difference. And the difference here is going to be the number of milliseconds since I just last saved this now value. 
So if I say uh, save the no value, it's going to move here and then it's going to start moving again. Save, move, and then I can measure time. But there is a special condition here. And that is if. Let's say I'm close to this 2 million or something. So I'm, I'm, let's say I'm a second before 2 million or whatever. And I save that value. And then I'm going to measure a time that's greater than the difference between what I saved and the maximum value. Then the time is going to count to 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 and then it's going to wrap to zero. And when I subtract something that's close to zero from a large number, I get a negative time. And I have to correct for that. Yes, as long as I say I'm looking for one second, I compare to something negative, I'm never going to get to one second. As a matter of fact, I'm probably never going to get there. I'm never going to get there because it's just counting, wrapping, counting, wrapping. So my timer would not work. And I'm not going to, to find out until after 24 days or until it happens that I save a time close to around 24 days. I do the timer, timing and then my timing system is blocked. And that's not good. So what I have to do is to, I have to make it positive. So what I do is I just add the maximum value on this timeline that they have to zero to maximum and this is the hexadecimal notation for the maximum number on that timeline timeline so i just add that and here is an example you can do for yourself to find out i use 0 to 100 it's easy i could use 0 to 10 but here i say if i save that uh, that uh, the time i save is 98 i'm going to measure four ticks so i save 98 ticks so then i'm going to tick 99 uh 100. 100 minus 98 is 2. That's not 4. And then it wraps to 0. And I start to click 1, 2. And 2 minus 98 is minus 96. It's not 4. But then I detect and say, okay, this is a negative number. So if it, the number is negative, I'm going to add 100. And minus 96 plus 100 is 4. That's exactly what the tick I want. So I have two ticks from 98, 99, 100. And two ticks from zero, one, two. And that's four. And if you forget this wrapping, this is a common way of doing time measurements. But if you forget the wrapping, you are in trouble. Okay, so that was the timing. So here, I'm going to make that so I get the comments in here. I'm going to rescale a little. Yeah, so here's the code. The first scan, that's just something that's been prepared here in this PLC. It tells me, is the PLC being restarted? Because if the PLC has been restarted, I should do something. And here's the time tick that we just talked about. If there's a restart, I just initialize my timing system. This difference, I just clamp them together and say, okay, I start to count now. What I'm going to use it for, I don't know, but I just initialize it. And then I say, okay, this uh, SPX, static Boolean input, that's just going to be used to detect the pulses. So that's edge detection, then I'm done. And now here, this TBX, what I want this to be, it's, it's going to be true when the input goes from, let's say, 0 to 1, false to true, and also from true to false. I'm not going to use the, uh, the, the trailing edge. But that's what we call edge detection. So I want uh, uh, this TBX to be true on a positive edge and a negative edge. And else it should be false. And here is written uh, what happened. So when you run through here, this exclusive or is the same as an equal. It's true if these are not equal. So if X is false and I've been running through and remember the PLC just executes this program. And when it's done executing it, it just restarts it. So it's a cyclic program. So here, if X was false, then SBX is going to be false because it's been through here. And then it gets back and now X is true. And then uh, the exclusive or between something that's true and false, that's true. So now I get a true on TBX. But then I immediately save my uh, input X that is now true to SBX. So the next scan I go through here, then they are equal. X is true and SBX is true. And then the TBX is going to be false. Because uh, exclusive or means that they are not equal. And also, when well, now it has stayed true for uh, some time, 
and then it runs true again it's the x is false and x is false and spx is true they are not equal so this one is true that's a trailing edge and then I immediately save it again so next time this one is false but that's this one is false too false too they are equal so the exclusive wall is false i could use also here this but on binaries xor is what usually it's uh, saying we have to get rid of the hash here. okay so that's uh, a check for uh, equality okay and here if for some reason my pulse train has stopped i would have output this yf that's false and that has to be reset so how long it's been in fault it might even be okay there might be pulses there but we just say okay you are going to stay faulty until someone tells you that you're okay uh, so that's the reset uh, and then we just reset uh, this output indicator and now down here as long as this one is set here is where i'm checking if i have the pulses as long as there is a fault and or i'm not enabled i'm not going to detect this uh, pulse train uh, I'm not going to do this. So then, then I end up down here if it's not enabled or I have a fault. That's because it's um, it is faulty. Uh, then I end up down here. I said the fault detector is false. The output is false. My warning output is false, and uh, also the pull spacing, the last pull spacing is false. And I just say that now. You are just going to be ready for do, do timing until, let's say, the, the fault is removed. We have to do recheck if there's a new fault. So just let my timing system, the timing difference that I'm measuring, I'm just keeping it close to zero. Like this, all the time. Uh, okay, now let's say that I've enabled this function and I don't have a fault. So there's no fault, so not a fault is true. So I have uh, true and true, which is true. And then I'm going to enter the if sentence. Measure the time that we talked about up here. Check for the negative time, really important. And just uh, wrap it around. And then I say, okay, if this ST time that's set down here, the pull spacing uh, that I have, that I'm going to detect later, this is a static time. If that's greater than my pull space and it was a parameter, say how long do I allow that? I have a warning because the pulses are too short, but they might return because they have an alarm. I allow for a delay, an extra delay. So if they are a little shaky, it would work, but, uh, but I give a warning. And the warning could be used to say, okay, your, 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 your transport is moving a little erratic or something like that. But, but it's still moving. It might indicate a bad uh, belt or something like that, or, or the belt is slipping on the roller, it's not uh, tight enough or whatever. So it's a warning. So there's something wrong here. Uh, okay, uh, so that was the warning. Uh, as long as this uh, uh, is below this time, the actual time I measure the pulses, I just reset the warning. So the warning, I don't have to reset. The warning is true or false depending upon how this is uh, is working so what i do now here as i say okay tbx and sbx then x input is true and i have a pulse which means that i've detected a positive edge on a positive edge i just reinitialize my timing system say okay i'm fine so i'm not going to to measure time anymore i'm going to restart my measurement uh and uh what i do here i say that okay my output that the pulse strain is there that's true that's true i have detected pulse and there's no fault detected and here's the pulse spacing because this one the tt time is counting up until i get a new pulse which is actually the pulse spacing that i'm measuring and here i restart the pulse measuring so this output is going to be the actual pulse time and that's what I check up here if that's uh, above but it's not an alarm yet but it is above what I've said should be the pulse spacing allow pulse spacing actual pulse spacing in one second I have 1.1 second that I allow for if it's above 1.1 second I get a warning but then I have an additional alarm time that's going to block this and has to be reset 
So, okay. Uh, and, and this is only happening on a pulse. So if I say then uh, that, okay, now I don't get pulses, but I haven't detected a fault either. And the time is, uh, is greater than my expected pulse time. What I then say is that my output, that I have a pulse train, the indication that's false. And I've detected a fault, that is true. I would also get uh, get, get a warning, but that's greater than and, uh, or equal, but that's only milliseconds anyways. So if I have a fault detected, I'm still in here. And the T, T time, my timer, I'm not resetting my timer because I'm not getting pulses here. So I'm not going to enter in here. And then I say, okay, if it's this time plus, plus the alarm delay time, I can add two timing values. So if then the, the, the pulse spacing allowed is 1.1 second, my alarm time is 900 millisecond, the sum would be two seconds. After two seconds, I would say, okay, there's a fault. My warning is uh, false and my pulse spacing is zero because there are no pulses. I'm not detecting anything. What I could say is that the pulse spacing is infinite or long. I don't know. But now it's blocked and then I'm back up here until it's reset. I'm just waiting. And again, on the, on the warning, the, uh, the warning my, that my pulse train is intact is false. And here it's also set to false. Uh, and uh, if the pulse train starts again, I fixed my transport, my band is tightened and my, uh, my, my roller is rotating, I get pulses and I go and reset my fault, then I'm back up here. Start a new detection. If everything is okay, I'm going to end up down here all the time. True, there's no fault detected, measured time. So then I can look for each pulse, I get an updated time and I can look at it. It's steady one second. This is, I, my repair work is pretty good. I've done good work. So it's a constant and my motor is uh, working fine. What is done down here is just output the values. We work on static internal or temporary internal and we just write to the outputs down here. So we out, out, output it from our function. Yeah, so that was a speed guard. Could use for, for transports or something, belt transport, where you have rollers in, uh, in, in, in uh, one end. And we use the non-drive end where we are driving and not counting the pulses. We are counting the pulses on the ro roller that's driven by my belt, my transport belt. A small function, but uh, it, it's pretty useful in various type of processes.